watercolour study from photos. Okay, I'm going to show you how to create a fine liner pen drawing over the top of a watercolour base. Um, so for this task, you're going to need a photograph to work from. So select one of your photos. I'm working again on A5 paper. So select your um, size of paper that you wish to use. Um, and then I'm just going to use these um, very basic watercolour paints. It doesn't matter if you've not got... Um, a really good set of watercolours. It, it can be a very basic set like mine because um, we can mix colours, it's fine. Um, okay, and a pencil. So I'm just starting with a HB pencil. Um, if you prefer just to get started with watercolours straight away, go for it. Please do not um, hold back on, on that. Um, I've chosen this entire picture of uh, a building. So this is Dover Castle, which is what I'm working from. Um, and what I'm going to do is just really lightly uh, draw the outline of my building. Now, I'm not going to spend ages and ages on this drawing. And the reason for that is in a moment, I'm going to be completely covering it with watercolour paint. So I'm not going to necessarily see much of it anyway. Um, so I'm not going to spend too long on this. I'm just getting a really basic idea on the outline of, of the building. Like um, and like I say, you don't even have to do this step. You don't. You can just go straight in with the watercolour if you're feeling brave enough. Okay, um, and again, I'm not copying the entire picture. Um, I'm just focusing on one area of it, but still main maintaining a an effective composition. Okay, once you're happy with your sketch, um, you can take a paintbrush, select an appropriate size, depending on the scale of your paper. Um, and then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to mix up some colours that I see in my photograph. So it's a good idea to work from a colour picture rather than a black and white edited image. Um, and I'm just going to mix up some of the colours I see. So I'm going to start with a grey. And then I'm, I'm not going to be super, super careful. This isn't a watercolour painting outcome. Um, this is just a watercolour base. So I'm just going to really um, loosely apply my paint to my painting. Um, I'm just using regular um, cartridge paper. But if you have access to watercolour paper, that is ideal as it will stop it from... Um, the paper from curling up okay and that's just all going on like that uh, I'm not being too precious about it because um, I'm, I'm kind of what I want to do is I want to get a kind of illustrative um, outcome so I'm, I don't want it to be too perfect but there we go but what I will do is mix up some darker tones I'll just add a bit of black to my grey. Um, and then put my dark tones on as well. Again, I'm not too worried about it. I'm just um, exploring this idea. I'm putting that on where I see it in the picture. And my lighter grey. And you can spend a lot longer than what I'm what I intend on doing. You can spend a lot longer on this and you can get a really um like perfectly drawn out image if you prefer to. Um, or if you like the process. I'm gonna make some nice blue for the sky. It's really important as well if you're using watercolour palette. Um 
make sure you're mixing your own colours. Try not to use colours directly from the palette. It's really good practice to mix up your own colours. Um, and then if you if you feel your colour's coming out too strong, remember we're going to be putting black pear pen over the top of this. So if it's coming out a little bit strong, you can always water it down with or thin it down with water. So it's a really you can see, I mean this isn't it's not it's not looking like a masterpiece at the moment, but the masterpiece will develop when we start putting on the, the pen once the paint is dry. I quite like um being able to see where I've changed um brush strokes rather than trying to blend it all in. I think that adds a sort of a texture and makes it look quite interesting. Okay, now I need a green for my grass. And trees. So it's almost as though we're sort of working in an impressionist way at the moment, sort of not too realistic. Okay, so there is my very basic, I can put that side on as well, very basic um, Dover Castle um, watercolour. Um, what I'm going to do now is allow that to dry. I'm just going to pop on a bit more tone here. I'm going to allow that to dry and as soon as it's dry, I'm going to use a fine liner to add some drawing over the top. Okay. Okay, once your painting layer is completely dry, you can move your watercolours to one side um, and grab yourself a selection of drawing pens. So these can be fine liners um, specifically for drawing, um, or if you don't have those available, you can use um, any other fine liner or biro, any pen. Um, have your photograph close by so as you can look at all the detail and what we're going to do now is we're going to start adding some line work over the top of our painting um, just really focusing on line and uh, detail um, i'm going to start with a fine brush a fine pencil <laughs> a fine pen so i've got this 0.3 now this is really fine i'm going to give that a go to start with um, and what i'm going to do is just start drawing the the outline of the castle or the building um if you're looking at your work at the moment and you're thinking oh my goodness where is this going um then just trust me on this um the watercolor layer is just a base point so it's just to give a little bit of color beneath the drawing okay um if you want to work the other way around and create a line drawing and then put the color over the top of it that works as well um, i prefer to do it this way um because it means that the the line is clearly visible and it's really good contrast rather than putting the paint over the top of it after um okay so i'm just going to have a go now at trying to copy some of the detail Oh, actually, that's very thin. I'm going to go a little bit thicker, just a tiny bit thicker. Um, so depending on what you've got available, just experiment a little bit with different sizes of uh, pens and um, see what works best for you.
Okay, so I really like the sort of illustrative style this uh, process gives your drawings. Um, uh, have a go yourself. Try to use your pen to create both tone and different textures. Try to draw back on previous knowledge about mark making um, to achieve that. Um, yeah, um, and you'll see that actually um, you can apply lots of different lines and mark making and you can create a really tight um, and realistic drawing um, or if that's not really your style um, and you prefer to keep it a little bit looser um, a little bit more fluid then um, th this also lends itself to to that way of working also um, but give it a go yourselves and have fun